Patrick O'Brien here with another Phenom Hoops episode of the Coach's Corner. We got a special guest coming back to you again here. But before we start off, just wanted to let everybody know that you have a chance to not only listen to this on another P- on the Phenom Hoops podcast, but as well as watch the entire interview um, on our YouTube page. So make sure you subscribe to both of those so you can get all the updates as well as check out all the other content on PhenomHoopReport.com here. Today I'm joined with uh, Audrey Kell. Head coach, Mike Kraft. Uh, coach, how are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Of course. We are very pleased to have you on here. Again, I'm also joined with the founder and president, Rick Lewis, here. I know he is eager to get uh, – he has some questions waiting for you. So, Rick, I'll let you take it away today. Well, welcome, Coach. Thank you for being on our show today. Again, it's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate you guys thinking about me. Hope everybody's safe out there and we're going to get through this. Yeah, absolutely. When anyone hears the name Mike Kraft, especially in the Charlotte area, it's synonymous with being a great X's and O's coach. Now, Coach, you have a tremendous background. You started out playing basketball. Um, you were a three-sport star at Hickory. You played baseball, football, basketball. You played at the high school level. You played at the collegiate level. You've coached at the collegiate level. Now you're coaching at the high school level. But let's go back to 1986. You played for your dad at Hickory High School. What was it like playing for your dad, and what lessons did you learn from that? Well, my dad was my best friend, and growing up, I would go to the practices. I would sit behind the bench. It was all basketball, and he coached some other sports too, so I was around sports all my life. Just a great way to grow up. He was very hands-on, rebounded for me. Uh, took me to camps. I just had tremendous opportunities being around him and, and playing for him. And it was just a great opportunity for me to see the world of basketball. Well, coach, um, you're not much taller than me. We're probably about the same height. So we're in that sub six foot category. We won't say what our exact height is. We'll just say sub six foot. But when you graduated from Hickory High School, you earned a basketball scholarship to play at Wingate. How tough was it to get a scholarship at your size to play at the collegiate level? It was very tough. I wasn't heavily recruited. Uh, we, I was on the scout team for four years. When I, I knew I wanted to be a coach, so that was a great training ground for me to be able to watch how Steve Hudson and John Thurston went about their business and scouted because I, I played for two coaches in college. So I, I began to formulate a lot of things that I was going to do later on, obviously with my dad, lots of that was, uh, that was a training ground that I really wanted to, to, to emulate because he was a great example for me to follow. Um, playing for him was incredible. And just being that, that coach son relationship and what he did, he did a great job of not bringing it home. You know, he didn't yell at me at home. Only would help me if I asked him. And then of course, when I got to Wingate, it was tough. The, the, everybody was stronger, faster, better than right. me. And so I worked extremely hard, but that still wasn't good enough. And that's a great lesson. You can work as hard as you can, but sometimes you just don't have the tools. But I stuck with it, and I was able to get a lot out of it. So that will that'll help me later on in life as I move forward in my coaching ranks. Yeah. You decided early on that you wanted to be a coach. And when you graduated from Wingate in 1990, correct? Yes, sir, 1990. And then you went to Appalachian State to be a grad assistant for two years. Your third year, you became a part-time assistant coach at Appalachian State. And then after those three years at Appalachian State, you had an opportunity to return home and go back to Wingate as an assistant coach for, what, five, six years? Six years at Wingate, yes, sir. So I, I went to App. Uh, because I really wasn't ready to get a teaching job. <laughs> and I felt like if I went and got my master's degree, if I ever went to teach, then I would get paid on that level. And so I went right after school, which I'm glad I did now. Coach Apke was great to me. He allowed me to be around the program and to be a graduate assistant. Uh, that's how I got my start. And I really, once I got to Appalachian, that became my dream was to be a college coach. Coach Apke was super. Uh, in fact, Coach Apke lives five minutes from Audrey Kell now, and he still comes to some of our practices, which is really, uh-huh. really neat. 
but after two years, as you said, somebody left, I got bumped up and I actually stayed there for two more years as the part-time assistant. And then my college coach called and said, we have an opening at Wingate. Would you like to come back? And the reason I went back is because I wasn't able to recruit at Appalachian. I was the third assistant, part-time assistant, and they didn't get to recruit. So I felt like that was a great need for me to go recruit. And as you know, D2s can be on the road way more than D1s. Right. So I was everywhere. And after three years, Jeff Reynolds came in, and he was uh, he would later become the head coach at Air Force. But I learned a lot from from him as well. So it was a great experience. I I didn't plan on staying at Wingate six years, but looking back on it, it was a great experience for me. After your time at Wingate, you had an opportunity to go to, back to the D1 sort, side of the business, and you went to Western Carolina from 2000 to 2005. Talk about your experience at Western Carolina, and you had one player that quite a few people know about. Yes, Kevin Martin was a player for us, led the country in scoring, 29th pick overall in the NBA draft, uh, drafted by the Sacramento Kings. But Western Carolina was a great fit for me. Uh, I was able to keep moving up in the ranks. I was the third guy, second guy, first guy, and became associate head coach. Worked for a guy named Steve Serena, who was great to me and learned a lot. He was actually an assistant at Davidson. So we did a lot of the same things that Coach McKillop uh, did. And then, of course, later on, that'll come into play with me being able to go to Davidson. Yeah, and then you told me um, after your stint at Western Carolina, you had an opportunity in 2005 to go to Davidson and be the director of basketball operations under Bob McKillop, who I think is one of the best pure basketball minds in the business today. What lessons did you learn from Bob McKillop in your tenure at Davidson? There are really too many to talk about. He was just phenomenal. It was a coaching clinic every single day. Every, this was a clinic. He gets the most out of those guys. And what I learned from him is practice organization. He would spend a lot of time on doing the practice plan, but then we would spend a lot of time going over it and making sure we knew exactly what we were supposed to do, what our duties were. And for me being director of basketball operations, I really couldn't be on the court. So I was watching most of the time, and what a great experience for me just to see every coach do what they were supposed to do, watch him, the way he interacted with the players, uh, his culture. I learned just so much from him, and there's so many lessons that I can take away uh, from him. And what we use today is we basically model our program after Davidson's program and Coach McKillop. Now, you spent 16 years on the collegiate side. And you had an opportunity when the Audrey Kell position came open. What was it like as far as the adjustment going from the collegiate ranks to the high school ranks? Because in most situations, most people go through high school and they want to go to the collegiate level. But you wanted to get back into the coaching at the grassroots. So what was your mindset when this position came open at Audrey Kell? My mindset was that I wanted to be a head coach, and I didn't see myself being a head coach in college for quite some time. Um, I also grew up with my dad being a history teacher. That's what I went to school for. But the biggest reason was we I had just gotten married, and we had – Michael was on the way. Uh, I mean, we had Michael at Davidson. It was, he was on the way when we were at Western Carolina. So once that happened, it sort of changed my perspective. I knew I didn't want to be – much and miss uh, what my kids were doing so we talked about it and the job at Audrey Kell came open uh, Mr. Matthews was awesome the principal that hired me but he was really unsure about hiring me because most college coaches don't stay that long or they get disenchanted but I assured him that I knew what I was getting into my brother's a coach he's actually a baseball coach at Hickory and the AD at Hickory so I knew what I was getting into and knew that teaching was going to be my first priority because that's what you have to do when you're a high school coach and teacher. You are, you're getting paid to teach, not right. really paid to coach. <laughs> right, right. Well, you started the program. Audrey Kell was an infant school in 2007. So you became the first coach at Audrey Kell and the only coach um, since its existence. But you have a tremendous track record. Uh, the first year that you were there, and you had no varsity players, and you're just basically starting from scratch. And you, you won five games. And 
I'm sure you went through the thought process, you know, like anybody who's very competitive, man, I want to win more than five. But in 2008, you turned it around. You went from five wins and you won 16 games your second year and lost 11, and you made it to the first round of the playoffs, which is unheard of. Talk about that. Well, first of all, those came to Audrey Kell from Providence and South Mech. They really got to be commended because they didn't really know what they were getting into at Audrey Kell. It was a brand new school. They both, they all had friends at Providence and South Mech. So they were very comfortable there, but they took a risk because a lot of people didn't come to AK. They stayed at their, their schools, but we're talking about Kevin Davis, Jordan Darnell, and they just bought into everything we were doing. We fought hard that first year. We actually won three games in a row in January, three conference games in a row, which was unheard of. We beat Providence, South Meth, and Weddington. Um, And so that really did a lot for the school culture, is what Mr. Matthews said, because, hey, we're we're now being able to beat those guys. Uh, But they they really laid the framework for what we were doing because they bought into everything. I wouldn't lie if I said it wasn't tough. We were outmanned by everybody. We had 1,200 kids in the, in the school. There was no senior class. But then that next year, like you said, we really were able to – we had a nine-game turnaround, 11-game turnaround, and they were just unbelievable. And we had everybody coming back. Nobody left. It was, they bought in. It was just great. Well, you laid the foundation, and then you go into 2009 and the 2010 season, and you went 21-9 and nine in 2009, and you went 20-8. and eight. And you made the Elite Eight. So in your third and fourth year as a head coach of a brand-new school, you have Aldrich Hill in the Elite Eight. Quite an experience for all <laughs> of us. Um, <laughs> I remember Boris Cheek. He, his daughter was Joy Cheek, McDonald's All-American, and played at South Mech. He pulled me aside. His son, Justin, was going to be a freshman my first year. And he said, why Aldrich Hill? And are you going to stay here? And, and how long do you think it will take you to get to the regionals? Boris, I don't know, but I'm going to be here. Um, you know, we love the community. We're going to stay here. And so after we made that first Elite Eight, we both laughed about that conversation. But the kids played great. We had unbelievable support from our administration. And, and we got lucky. We had a good draw in the state playoffs uh, both years. And so we were able to go back-to-back Elite Eight. We lost that game to Lake Norman in – 2010 our big boy Cam McQueen didn't play and so that was disappointing that we didn't have our whole squad there but Lake Norman ended up winning the whole thing so they had a really good team and coach Jolly did a great job uh, beating us in that regional game. I remember that and then of course another um, season that I remember was that, um, back in um, 2014 you made it to the Elite Eight again but this, the one that really stands out is in 2015 when you went 28-2 and two and you made it to the state championship. Now, I remember the game you were playing for the Western Regional Championship. And you were playing – I can't remember the team, but I remember the out-of-bounds play. You remember the team that you beat there, Coach? We played West Charlotte. Uh, West Coach Char- Terry had a great – he had a great team, and uh, they had – that's the whole game. You know, it was one of those games where we were able to come back. And, and we really and got guys, lucky. And you guys were down by two points with the ball underneath your basket, and you ran an unbelievable um, baseline out-of-bounds play. Stephen um, Santa Ana came off the screen, shot the three, and won it and sent you to the state championship. Well, I'm a great copycat, and that wasn't my play. That was Coach McKill's play. And we ran that play a lot of times, and there's a lot of different options out of it. But – Seth Davis made a great pass. Josh Froyan made a great screen. And, of course, Steven had all the confidence in the world to hit that shot. And it was one of those things where we were very fortunate because in that – if he misses, we lose the game. But he was really clued in, made it, focused, and then we were able to go to the state championship. It was a great shot. I think somebody dubbed it the shot heard round North Carolina. Right. Which is really neat. Well, you, you've had um, 16 years at the collegiate level. You've also had 14 years at the high school level. You're 14 years at Audrey Kale. 12 of the 14 years, you've made it to the playoffs, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? 
Yes, sir. And seven of the 14 years, you've made it to the Sweet 16. You've also had 25 players to play at the collegiate level, and you have two pros. I know you said Stephen Anna, Anna, and the other one was um, Josh. Josh Troyne. Just got through playing in Israel this past year. Yes, sir. You have 30 years accumulated, 16 at the collegiate, 14 at the high school. Describe your coaching philosophy. It has evolved over those 30 years. <laughs> and, Raquel, we've had some great players. As you just mentioned, 25 college players. We've had a lot of other really good players. Most of those guys have been hard workers, easy to coach. So, you know, I'm sort of embarrassed that you're talking to me and not them and talking about how great these kids are. Uh, we got a great culture, and that's I into it. That's part of my philosophy is that we want to have a positive culture. We want to have a culture of hard work, and we want to have a culture where we are going to scout the other team. We're going to tell our players what they're going to do, what to expect, and then we're going to make some adjustments, some wrinkles as we move across the schedule, but it, we're going to hopefully defend. We're going to try to rebound. Um, not every team's a great rebounding team. That's just how it is. But we're going to try to execute on offense, and so we're going to try to out-execute you, and that's our philosophy. Uh, we, we go by TCC, Trust, Care, Commitment. I got that from Coach McKillop. In fact, Steph Curry has that tattooed on his wrist, TCC, which I don't think a lot of people know that. Uh, but, yeah, it's – my philosophy has evolved, and I, I hope I've been able to adapt to coaching to players because it's definitely changed in 30 years uh, since I got into coaching, and it's changed in 14 years since I've been coaching high school. Coach, I wanted to ask you um, about your season this past year here. Um, you finished with a 22-win season. And you made a deep run in the playoffs again, like you've you know been uh, known to do there. But talk a little about what your seniors have accomplished during their career at Audrey Kell. Seniors, the last three years, they went 23 and 6, 23 and 6, and 22 and 7, uh, two, sweet, two sweet 16s and an Elite Eight appearance. So they really had, uh, you know, a three-year run that's only bettered by that team and that finished in 2015 I think they were 23 and 6 and 28 and 2 and of course that 2015 team they won 27 in a row so uh, but these seniors they they worked at it they played hard and I'm really really proud of them now you will be missing some key guys from this uh, this past season but you'll be depending on some new guys and some honestly some names that have players that have already been proven themselves there but talk a little bit about what's the coming years for players like Evan Smith, Peyton Gerald, uh, Brandon Nelson, et cetera, et cetera there. What is your look at next year's team of, like, how they can continue the winning trend? Very excited about this group. They are a hardworking group. Uh, they understand what's expected of them. They understand that we've, we've been able to have some success, and we're going to try to continue that success. Peyton Gerald's a senior who is getting some recruiting looks. Uh, six seven. When he started Raquel in as a freshman, he was a uh, little weak and not as tall. And he just kept growing and growing and growing and kept working and working and working. And he could end up being, if not the top rebounder in our history, the second leading rebounder in our history. So he's he's really had a lot of upside there. Uh, Evan Smith is phenomenal. He's a point guard, but he can also play off the ball. Uh, he just really plays hard. Great defender. Uh, he always guards the other team's best player. So uh, I think that sometimes hurts him on offense, but he doesn't care. He wants to, he wants to guard the other players. Uh, he wants to guard the other team's best player. And then Brandon Nelson was a freshman that really came on this past year. He can shoot the basketball, and he really concentrated on getting better on defense, and that's the way he was able to get on the floor. And then after that, we'll be depending on – Jacob German, who was hurt this year, he's a wing player who will be back. Um, and then some other guys that will be back and will be – hopefully get in the gym pretty soon, start working with them yeah. again. That's the part I miss, really, is working with these guys. Well, well Coach, you've um, you spent 30 years as a coach, like I said before, 16 in college and 
14 at the high school level, and you also played at the high school and the collegiate game. What's the biggest changes in the game today when you played back in 1986? There was no three-point shot in 1986 when I was in high school. So, but it was in college. But I think the three-point line has changed the game. There's so many kids that can shoot the basketball now. And it, momentum-wise, if you're out of the game, you got, uh, you know, you're down by a lot, you're never out of the game. So the three-point line has changed it. I think that the, when you look at the three-point line, it opens up the middle because people got to come out, out on you if you're shooting a three. Uh, but it can also turn the game around the other way. If you take too many threes, like a lot of teams do, then you can shoot yourself out of the game. Uh, the, also, the other thing that's really changed is the fact that you have a lot of kids that play year-round, and they don't play other sports, and so they're able to specialize in basketball. Right. I've seen that happen. I don't like it, but it's the way it is. And you have a – especially in Charlotte, I mean, you got so many great players. you got so many great coaches. It just makes it hard to get out of Charlotte in the state playoffs. But those kids concentrate on basketball year-round. And it's almost – like at Audrey Kell, we got 3,300 kids. Unfortunately, if they don't do that, they're going to probably get left behind uh, if they try to play other sports. We certainly encourage them to play other sports. But they just seem to matriculate towards one, like baseball – Players play baseball, football players play football. Football players are lifting during basketball season, and it's just kind of evolved into that. And I think you're seeing the trend in that all through the United States. It's like when you played, you played both baseball, football, and basketball. You don't see that happening very much anymore. You find a few two sports stars, but very unheard of today if you're going to really be good at the game. Um, what are the biggest challenges you face as a head coach? Challenges as a head coach, there are many. One that I face is, and that's been for 14 years, is coming from the classroom to the court because you want to give those students all you have in the classroom. And I teach history. I'm not a PE guy, which I think PE is a little bit easier. But it's adjusting to that, the routine you have, the grind. Um, and then parents today are a little bit different. Um, we have great parents at Audrey Kell but it seems like they all look at the rosters to see who's going to, where they're going to play and uh, how much they're going to play. And then they can make adjustments as such for that. And I wish that we could get all the players in our district and have them at Audrey Kale. Um, but unfortunately we don't, we don't get that. We don't get to do that today. Well, you have a tremendous resume coach as a player in high school, college, you coach at the collegiate level in high school, What's the biggest takeaways and lessons you can give your players today? With working hard, you, you're always going to have a shot if you work hard. If you don't work hard, then you're not going to have a shot. Even the best players, if they work hard, they're going to be better. I mean, we're watching the last dance with Michael Jordan. If you can't learn anything from watching that and seeing somebody that worked hard, you know, that's, I got a great story. Uh, Tate Small was a kid at Ardrick Hill that got cut two years in middle school, came to Ardrick Hill, barely played as a freshman on JV, barely played as a JV on, as a sophomore, but got better and better, ended up being all-conference and ended up going to Queens on a scholarship. So, but he worked hard. You never know how you're going to grow. You, know, you don't know what you're going to do. You don't know when that growth spurt is going to hit. So you just keep working and good things will happen. And I, I think that's the biggest lesson is, just keep working hard, keep grinding. And I'm sure you see it all the time with players who maybe don't play a lot as a freshman, sophomore, junior, but then their senior year, and they get a scholarship. And it doesn't matter how many offers you have, as long as you get that one, you can go fulfill your dream if you keep working. I've always had the philosophy, Coach, and I've said it many times, it's not where you start, but it's where you finish. And, um, you know, sometimes success can come too early to a lot of players. Um, you can be very successful as a basketball player in your eighth and ninth grade, and you don't have that continued growth. You might be comfortable with all the accolades that come your way, and then you have other players that, you know, they keep working and they get better each and every year. And, of course, naturally some kids just have that natural growth spurt. By the time they're a junior or senior, they're being highly recruited. 
I mean, even going back to what you mentioned about the last dance, um, no one knew who Michael Jordan was as a sophomore in high school. Um, no one knew who he was as a junior. It wasn't until his junior going into his senior year that he went to the UNC camp, and then the rest is history. You look at a guy like Scottie Pippen, who was 6'1", and went to Central Arkansas State as a uh, basically a walk-on as a trainer. And then also Scotty, uh, not Scotty Pippen, but um, Dennis Rodman, who went to Southeast Oklahoma State. So every every player's journey is different. But I think the one thing we can take away from is what you said. If you just continue to work hard, you'll get where you want to be. And it's not where you start, but where you finish that most matters. Exactly. And I remember Stephen Santa Adam telling me that one reason that he became what he became was because we challenged him. And so it's okay to get challenged. It's okay to, I told him, hey, you're going to make the team as a freshman, but can you start? You know, can you be an all-conference player? And so looking back on his career, he said that's one of the things that drove him was that we always challenged him and didn't want him to be, you know, complacent with whatever he was doing, wanting him to keep working. And so, again, it comes back to hard work. In closing, Coach, you know, your time at Davis and you said the influence that Bob McKillop had. And I was going to ask you the question, but basically um, I answered it myself because when – I watch your team play at Audrey Kale. You look like the Davison version of a high school team, you know, of a college team, I mean. But um, so I'm sure you got a lot of your um, philosophy from Bob McKillop and Davison. And like I said, when I watch Audrey Kale, it, it's like watching the Davison of a high school um, team. Well, that's a huge compliment. And that's what we strive to do. I think Coach McKillop's been one of the best at sustained consistency. And that's what we want to do. We want to be good every single year. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but that's what we strive to do. And he's the best at that. They went up to Atlantic 10, they won the regular season, next year they won the tournament. And so a lot of people said he couldn't do that. And so that's, you know, that that's a great compliment, and we hope we, we look that way. Because his teams are tough. They've always been tough, and they're never out of the game. And so that's what we preach. If we can play hard, play smart, play together, then we feel like we got a shot to win. Well, you've done quite that, Coach. Um, you have um, a remarkable resume and record at Audrey Kale. And I think uh, I can echo the sentiments of a lot of people. You're one of the best pure basketball minds and coaches in the state of North Carolina. And we want to say thank you for coming on today and wish you good luck. And uh, thank you so much. Well, thank you, and thank you for all you guys do for getting these players exposure, and you're always tweeting out about, hey, act right, and of course, we try to do that in our program as well, because the basketball, I think you have one that's a basketball that's deflated. It's going to run out one day, and you've got to right. be able to, you've got to be able to get a job, you've got to be able to treat people right, and we certainly preach that in our program, but I know you treat, you, you preach that as well as you're going through all these recruits and you have a lot of influence on those kids and we appreciate it. Well, thank you, coach. Yeah. Thank you, coach. Um, your history, your background, you have a great story and obviously you're a true leader on and off the court. Um, obviously one of the top coaches out there in the state there. So we want to thank you again for joining us there from, from myself, from Rick Lewis, from Phenom Hoops here to all our subscribers and listeners and viewers now. Make sure you subscribe, uh, leave some comments and everything like that. See what you think and what your thoughts are there. But again, to continue to check back with us as we bring you another episode of the Coach's Corner from Phenom Hoop Report. Uh -huh.